How many of us feel despair when we consider the degree of conflict, distrust, or even hatred among different national, racial, religious, or ethnic groups in our world today? How many of us lose hope when we consider the ecological realities we're facing and feel unable to change the direction we're headed? I know those feelings are strongest in me when I perceive myself as powerless to push back against what's unfolding. Here's the thing. I know an extraordinary group of people who are systematically confronting what we're facing and their work are providing unexpected models that could guide us in the direction of healing our differences. I also believe that their efforts are laying the groundwork for the kind of collaboration that's going to be necessary in order to successfully engage our political and ecological futures. The people I'm talking about are the leading edge of a new type of diplomacy led by citizen diplomats who are building bridges where others say bridge building to be impossible. Would you like to meet them? Now, I expect that when you hear the words diplomat or diplomacy, you're likely thinking of nation state representatives, a small and elite group of foreign service officers whose work is aimed at preventing war, laying the groundwork for treaties to be signed, or promoting cooperation among nations. Uh, but I'm not talking about that group, as important as they are. I'm talking about a new generation of diplomats who come from many different walks of life and many different vocations. That's because today, diplomacy is no longer only practiced by foreign service officers. It's also practiced by community organizers and activists, business people, scientists, artists, educators, and religious leaders, among others. Diplomacy today is truly transprofessional. And it is out of this reality that a new group of diplomats have arrived who are addressing problems traditional diplomats are unable to. Now, I know about these people because I direct a school of diplomacy and I have had the privilege of traveling around the world to sit at the feet of a number of these people and learn from them. I'm also lucky enough to be able to count a number of them among my friends. So let's begin with the Kenyan veterinary scientist, Wangari Matai. Dr. Matai identified that one of the greatest problems facing her and her neighbors was deforestation, which led to an increase in poverty and social instability. In response, Dr. Matai gathered a group of women in her local community and they began to plant trees. Using her knowledge as a scientist and her skills as a community organizer, the women that she gathered went on to create an organization that eventually planted over 50 million trees in Kenya and inspired similar efforts across Sub-Saharan Africa and beyond. And today it's known as the Greenbelt Movement. This movement has created jobs for over 30,000 women in beekeeping, forestry, and food processing, and has built lasting bridges across boundaries of religious, ethnic, and national difference. In recognition of her extraordinary accomplishments, Dr. Matai was awarded the 2004 Nobel Peace Prize. Now, while Dr. Matai died of cancer in 2011, her movement is very much alive and thriving. So next, I'd like you to meet here in Chicago, Rami Nashashibi. His inner city Muslim action network, Iman, has been creating what were previously believed to be improbable bridges on the south side of Chicago among Jews, Christians, Muslims, Latinx, African American, and white Chicagoans through a form of citizen diplomacy that gathers people together around providing basic human needs for the communities it serves. Iman sees the neighborhoods it works in as ecosystems in need of holistic engagement. It helps to transition formerly incarcerated individuals into new and meaningful roles through its Green Reentry Program, which trains people to rehab abandoned buildings and turn them into affordable housing. Iman has also established a Green Market, a medical, dental, and mental health clinic, and an amazing arts program that serves the spiritual and cultural needs of the communities it serves. Iman works with people and in so doing strengthens them both economically and ecologically, two goals which Iman sees as absolutely linked. Now as of late, Rami has found a wonderful way to take a break from his workload. He started a band. It's amazing. You got to check it out. 
So in Paris, I'd like you to meet Radia Bakouche, a young French woman who is president of Coexiste, an interconvictional group of young people ages 15 to 35 who build bridges across boundaries of religious, racial, ethnic, and economic difference. Coexiste uses the word interconvictional to describe its mission of bringing together both people of faith and agnostics and atheists. Radia and her friends see all three of these groups as absolute equals, who all have equally valuable convictions. Now, while Coexiste was founded by a Christian and has had amazing Jewish and atheist leaders, Radia herself is a Muslim, and under her leadership, Coexiste is stronger than ever. Coexiste stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with those people who seek to divide us by creating friendship networks among thousands of young people. And to date, Coexiste has facilitated the meeting of over 120,000 students across France, Belgium, and Germany. And then there is Ilya Sikhrovsky, a Vienna-based Jewish activist who founded the Muslim Jewish Conference, a network of young Muslims and Jews who support each other, share tactics, and work together to inspire interconvictional work in wider and wider circles. The MJC was founded as a project to create one space for Jews and Muslims to meet each other and form friendships. Today, its members create meeting grounds for Muslim and Jewish bridge builders across five continents. Ilya was inspired to found the MJC in part due to the rise of the far right in Europe, whose success he saw as absolutely linked to their ability to network. Ilya, as a European Jew whose family survived the Holocaust, came to the conclusion that progressive people must out-network those who seek to divide us, and on an even grander scale. Now I'd like you to meet Muhammad Abu Bakr, who grew up in Sudan, where at the age of 14, he was documenting genocide in his country. Muhammad founded the African Middle Eastern Leadership Project, AMO, a network of young millennial leaders across the Middle East and Africa who worked together to, to reject the idea that peace and cooperation are not possible. AMO trains young people to strategically advocate for democracy and to non-violently push back against those who use violence and fear to separate people. To this end, Muhammad cre created the Amal Academy, a virtual school where teachers equip students with the tools necessary to effectively practice their civil society activism and counter sectarian violence more safely and effectively. And then finally, there is the Swede, Greta Thunberg, whose weekly climate strikes transatlantic voyage, and the coordinated global responses that they inspired has served to highlight the power of an ecologically driven citizen diplomacy. Greta's efforts have highlighted to millions the fact that transnational bridge building is no longer the sole purview of the traditional diplomat, nor is it limited to those of voting age. Greta has accomplished what she has, not in spite of her age or the fact that she lives with Asperger's, but precisely because of who she is. Greta's efforts have not only served to call a higher level of attention to the degradation of our planet, her efforts have also served to create highly diverse networks of people who are united in their common commitment to becoming local, regional, and transnational leaders in demanding that their governments, businesses, and fellow citizens adopt more sustainable practices and worldviews. So, what is required to become the kind of citizen diplomat Wengari, Rami, Radia, Ilya, Mohammed, or Greta have become? Here are some of the common qualities which I believe they share. And as I list them, I invite you to think about which of these you embody yourself and which of these qualities you might be interested in working on acquiring. They all have the ability to put their feet into the shoes of others. And they all have a deep desire to try and see the world through other people's eyes. They see opportunities where others see only challenges. They see the well-being of others as directly connected to their own well-being. They have the courage to admit when they're wrong 
and take great joy in learning from others. They have the ability to practice mediation and negotiation. They have tremendous intellectual curiosity. They speak more than one language. They have the ability to create beautiful and neutral spaces wherein they invite people on different sides of a conflict to come together. They are active, engaged listeners who value other people's stories and value them as much as their own. They have the ability to see that winning is not getting everything they want. And they are absolutely clear about the fact that they are not objective, nor are they the sole purveyors of truth. There is one other thing that unites all of these people. They have a common spiritual practice. Their spiritual practice is being of service to others. Now, when I use the word spiritual, I'm not referring to any one particular religious tradition per se, because of course being spiritual is equally possible for a practitioner of a religion or a secular person. What I'm referring to, rather, are the sources that people draw on to find meaning and purpose in their lives, such as the way that people become authentically connected to each other and to something greater than themselves when they take action together. The act of becoming a diplomatic bridge builder is, in my estimation, one of the most profound spiritual practices that matter now. Now, perhaps if you've been listening to the stories that I've been recounting, you've come to the conclusion that the people I'm describing are somehow in possession of powers that you don't have, or that they're some kind of saints, or that they're somehow otherwise different from you and me. Well, I'm very happy to report that this is not the case at all. I know for a fact that all these people are quite human. They struggle with fear, doubt, grief, and anger, just as the rest of us do. What I do think is different about this group is that they have been personally transformed by the actions that they have taken and continue to take. And by having the privilege of working with them, I have been transformed as well. By choosing bridge building, we have found a spiritual practice that matters, not only for ourselves, but for many others. Diplomacy has the capacity to create communities of people who can effectively counter the efforts of those who are bent on preventing people from acting, speaking out, voting, or creating products or practices that serve to heal rather than harm our planet and its inhabitants. Diplomacy also has the capacity to create networks of communities whose numbers could overwhelm those who are invested in maintaining unsustainable and fear-driven practices. Diplomacy is a bridge to the world most people want to live in. It is for that reason that I want to invite you today to join what I call the Global Citizen Diplomatic Corps, to become part of building bridges alongside allies you didn't even know you had. In taking on this work, I want to challenge you to reject what you've been told is possible or impossible. I also want to invite you to abandon the popular myth that says that money and weapons are the greatest sources of power. That belief will never allow us to create the communities and networks we need to survive as a planet. The greatest source of power lies in those who choose collaboration and who choose to inspire others to the work of bridge building and network creation, and who refuse to give in to the lie that says that we are powerless. What truly distinguishes the group of people that I've described to you today is one skill that they embody above all others. They have the capacity to channel the energy of their fear and their love and their anger into action. And in so doing, they have become what is truly unexpected. That is why I want to invite you to join us. I want to invite you to become a citizen diplomat.